10 years, more or less, you know, 10, 15. Uh, it'll happen. Sure. Yeah, and that's all uh, I would say contingent on how uh, our technology progresses, let's say, over the next 10 to 15 years. And I just want to kind of break into our discussion of artificial intelligence by going back in, through the predictions of leading researchers. And that you, you're probably fully aware of the fact that, you know, even back <laughs> in the 1960s, it <laughs> yeah, it's it, it, back in the 1960s, you know, um, it, it, over at MIT, they were predicting, uh, uh, you know, thinking computers within 10 years. And uh, I, I know several different people, including yourself, at different times have predicted an explosion, an artificial intelligence explosion at some point. Um, and, and perhaps this is, uh, you know, kind of predicated on economic expansion, uh, say, th in Japan through the uh, 80s and early 90s, and, and the tech boom in the United States, the internet boom, and, and then also the recent uh, uh, ra rather run-up in economic uh, activity uh, in the value of world markets. But uh, are you still pretty, uh, w what's your current feeling on uh, at what point we might see uh, what has been envisioned, you know, a mind in silicon or a software mind uh, being developed. You got you any feeling for that? L like myself, following the progress over the last few years, I'm fairly optimistic if, you know, if, if for those who think that it's going to be a, a pleasant outcome for human beings, but I'm fairly optimistic that I'll see it in my lifetime. I'm 37, and I think I'll see... Uh, artificial intelligence or AGI or some form of uh, intelligence on par with human beings sometime in my lifetime. What's your take now that you've been in the field for the last 10 to 15 years? Well, I'm in my 60s uh, and assuming that uh, Aubrey de Grey, uh, can I assume that your audience know, knows about Oh, him? yes. It's very familiar with Aubrey de Grey, yes. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> Assuming the progress he's predicting is not quite as fast as, 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 as it is, then I have, what, let's say 30 more years? Yes. So what do I expect to see in 30 more years? Uh, probably uh, fully blown nanotechnology. Yeah, we'll, we'll have uh, molecular scale robots, and they really will be manipulating one atom at a time and positioning them wherever they want. So with, with fully blown nanotech, uh, I don't see major new tools uh, you know, nanotech-based tools that yeah. will revolutionize brain science. I, I see that coming. Okay. And, and hence, let's say, I don't know, 20, say 2020s, there'll, there'll be an you know, exponential explosion in, in our knowledge of how the brain works. And then those principles immediately, you know, once they're discovered, will be put into machines, uh, speeded up a million times. Sure. So, so 2030s, um, I see uh, very brain-like machines uh, coming into being. In, in, in fact, I um, don't know if your audience, audience is, is aware, uh, DARPA, you know, America's DARPA, D-A-R-P-A. -A. Yep, DARPA, yeah. They've come out recently, very recently, with a, a BAA, a, a broad area announcement, meaning they're inviting the country's universities to submit research grant proposals to build a, a sort of cat-like, I guess, artificial brain with modern electronics with, with enough uh, electronic capacity to, to simulate a whole uh, small mammal brain. So in a sense, it's, it's starting. I see but, it is but, starting. Um, I see it is starting, and I, and I, I know I've followed, as well as mem many members of the audience tonight, they followed a lot of the predictions from some of the people you're familiar with, Kurzweil and Ben Gertzel, uh, yourself, uh, Marvin Minsky, you know, uh, Rodney Brooks, all of these fellows. Uh, and, and their predictions. Now, what is the limiting factor? Because, uh, you know, artificial brains have been predicted quite a few times, as I mentioned, all the way back in, from the 60s through the 70s. You know, you got uh, the Psych Project, uh, you know, Doug Lynette, uh, you know, claiming that he was going to have uh, an artificial brain at some point. Uh, what's the limiting factor? What is holding us back uh, through all these decades? Well, I think in a word, just uh, ignorance. We, we, oh. we, we just don't know what intelligence is or how, how to produce it. Um, ben, ben, Ger yeah, ben Gertz and I are, uh, you know, we're friends. Sure. And uh, yeah, we, would, we have a bit of a, a disagreement on the, on the approach. Like, Ben's, Ben's more an engineering uh, approach. He thinks uh, just by you know, putting enough 
human intelligence into the problem. He, he can solve it with, with modern machines. Yeah. But in the past, we just you know, we couldn't do anything because our, our machines were just too too slow, too slow, okay. you know, too, you know, just not powerful enough. But in the, I mean, people argue that we're now in the last decade of Moore's law, and I'm not sure I agree with that. But anyway, as the argument is um, around 2020, Moore's law. Oh, can I assume everyone knows? Sorry, I yeah, Moore's Law. Can yeah. I assume everyone knows Moore's Law? Yes, yep, you can assume that. You can assume everything, in most general terms uh, with regards to artificial intelligence and uh, other, uh, some other, you know, nanotech and uh, other futuristic predictions, uh, people are familiar with, so yes. Okay, okay. So Moore's Law is predicting that around 2020, it'll be technologically possible to store one bit on one atom. So then, then you're talking like if you have a handheld object, um, and you ask yourself how many, how many bits, or how many atoms, in in that object, and the answer is about a, a trillion trillion. So, uh, it, and at molecular scale, uh, the, these atoms switch, they switch their state you know, from a naught to a one and vice versa yep. in femtoseconds. That's that's a thousand trillion times a second. So if you could if you could have a handheld object that was nanotech appropriately, then the switching capacity of that object would be about, if you do the math, it's, it's about 10 to the 40, you know, 10 to the power 40, which is uh, I don't know, a trillion, trillion times more than the estimated switching capacity of the human brain. A so, trillion times? Uh, yeah. A million times right? or a trillion times? Uh, no, 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 a trillion, trillion times. Uh, Greater than the capacity of the human brain. Yeah, uh, a lot of people estimate that the switching rate, you know, the, the bits, the information processing speed of the human brain is, is estimated at about 10 to power 16. 10 to power 16, uh, uh, okay. Yeah, it, it's pretty quick to calculate. I could just sort of sure. describe it verbally in about 10 seconds now. Um, so, yeah, where does, this, where does this 10 to the power 16 come from? Well, uh, you start with how many neurons, how many brain cells are there in the human brain? And, and the answer is about 100 billion, 100 billion. So that, that's 10 to the 11. Yeah. And then you say, okay, well, how many connections are there on average uh, for one neuron? And then the answer is about, let's say, 10,000. So there's another 10 to the 4. Yeah. And each connection or synapse uh, is firing yeah. away, let's say, another... Sure. Uh, Power of 10. Yep. So, you, so what's that? 11 plus 4 plus 1, you know, there it is, 10 to the 10 16. 10 to the 16, right. And you're saying that a, a properly a nanotech uh, a device that would fit in your hand uh, by molecular switching uh, atom by atom could do 10 to the 40. Yep. So it, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. And, and, and that's classically. I'm not, I'm that's classically, right. I started talking about quantum computing. That's, sure. that's classically. So, so if you bring quantum computing into it, then you know, the, the numbers just shoot up exponentially. Understood. Even compared to that. So you're saying but, by 2020, it, this, this type of switching capacity could be possible? Yeah, I, I, yeah I, I see around, around that time. Then, uh, we, you know, we, we have more electronic capacity than we have ideas at the moment, and, and I just see that problem remaining with us. But uh, with um, with these powerful new nano tools that the brain sciences, the neurosciences will have, then they'll you know they'll be able to inject as you know, it's, the, it's the curse file scenario, sure. which, which I agree with in, in, in that sense. I mean I, I don't agree with him at all on, on the politics, but anyway, so you could inject billions of these you know, into the into the brain, and they they uh, circulate to every synapse and report back with little radio control, sure. saying, uh, you know, I'm at position X, Y, Z, and the synaptic strength here is whatever, and you, you, you collect all this information and uh, reverse figure out how the brain works. Sure, figure out how the brain works. Yeah, yeah, reverse engineering. Yeah, right, right. So, I mean, we're, we're um, Ben Goetz and I differ, so what, I, I'm somewhat cynical that uh, the purely engineering, the fairly traditional approach that, that Ben's taking uh, will actually work, because... Yeah, you know, Ben's a bright guy, but you know, there's been lots of other bright guys in the past who yeah. have tried yeah. simply to understand what you know AI is and have failed. So it's an incredibly difficult problem. So what's but your on approach? The other hand, How does your approach differ? Well, I, I'm the brain route. I, I, yeah, you know, my view is I'll take the brain route. I mean, oh, oh, analyze, 